Hi everyone, I'm Emma Mitchell. I'm a 24-year-old graphic designer working from home in Seattle. Life looks perfect on my Instagram. Successful freelance career, cute apartment, and a seemingly normal family. But they say appearances can be deceiving, right? Emma, you absolutely need to get out more. Your apartment is becoming your prison, Rachel says, sprawled on my couch during our weekly movie night. I have deadlines, Rach. Plus, working from home is safer. Safer from what? Your mom doesn't even know where you live now. Michael, my boyfriend of eight months, joins in. She's right, Em. You can't let your past control your future. They don't fully understand. Every time I look in the mirror, that small scar near my temple reminds me of everything. Mom's perfect home laundry business. Mitchell's premium cleaning services. More like Mitchell's prison for young Emma. Remember when you were 12? I hear Mom's voice echo from the past. Time to learn the family business, Emma. Amy's too young, but you're old enough to help. Amy, my younger sister, always got away with everything. Mom, Emma's not folding these shirts right, she'd whine, knowing it would set Mom off. These are designer clothes, Emma. Do it again. Mom would inspect every piece like a drill sergeant. One wrinkle meant doing it all over. Dad would just sit there pretending to read his newspaper. Linda, maybe go easier on her. He'd occasionally mumble but never actually stop her. Your father worked hard to buy all this equipment, she'd say, gesturing to the industrial-grade machines in our converted garage. We can't disappoint our high-end clients. I glance at my laptop screen, another freelance design project due tomorrow. Rachel notices my anxiety spike. Hey, you're not there anymore. You're crushing it as a designer now. Yeah, I manage a smile. Got three new clients this week. That's my girl. Michael pulls me close. See? You're thriving despite everything. But they don't know about the panic attacks, the nightmares, the way I triple-check my locks every night, terrified mom will somehow find me, how I still flinch at the sound of an iron heating up. Sometimes I wonder if I should have reported her, I whisper. You were a kid, Emma. Rachel squeezes my hand but you're not anymore. You're strong, successful, and free from her control. My phone buzzes, a text from Amy. Mom's asking about you again, says she misses her little helper. I block the number, like I've done countless times before. Amy keeps getting new ones, playing Mom's messenger. Want me to stay over tonight? Michael offers, seeing my hands shake. No, I need to learn to face these nights alone. But as I hug my friends goodbye, my mind drifts to that terrible day when everything changed. The day of the iron incident. The day I realized I had to escape or die trying. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. I was 16, burning up with fever, barely able to stand. My hands were shaking as I tried to focus on the pile of designer clothes that needed pressing. Mom, I really don't feel well. My head's spinning. Stop being dramatic. Mrs. Richardson's order needs to be perfect. These are $500 blouses. The steam from the iron made my dizziness worse. The room was spinning, but Mom kept hovering. You're ironing too slow. We promised same-day service. I'm trying. My voice was barely a whisper. The thermometer had read 102 degrees that morning. Trying isn't good enough. Look what you did. I had accidentally let the iron rest too long leaving a slight yellow tinge on the white silk blouse. That's when everything went black. I collapsed, knocking over the ironing board. You stupid, worthless girl! The next thing I felt was searing pain near my temple. Mom had thrown the hot iron at me. I screamed, clutching my face. Linda, what have you done? Dad finally emerged from his study. She ruined a $500 blouse. She's destroying our business. It was an accident. She's sick. Stop making excuses for her, Tom. This is our livelihood. I could feel warm blood mixing with tears on my face. Amy stood in the doorway, smirking. Maybe if you weren't so clumsy, Emma. The commotion brought Mrs. Peterson from next door. She gasped when she saw my face. I heard screaming. Is everything okay? Emma had a little accident with the iron. 
Mom's voice suddenly switched to sugary sweet. She's not feeling well. I can see that. Mrs. Peterson's eyes narrowed, taking in the scene. I noticed her phone slightly peeking from her pocket pointed toward us. I'll drive her to the emergency room, Dad offered weakly. No hospitals, Mom snapped. Just put some ice on it. And you better figure out how to pay for that ruined blouse, Emma. Linda, she needs medical attention. What she needs is to learn responsibility. Mrs. Richardson will never come back after this. Do you know how many referrals she could have brought us? I touched my temple gently, wincing at the burn. Mrs. Peterson stepped closer. I have some burn cream at home. Let me help. We can handle our daughter, thank you very much. Mom blocked her path. Later that night, lying in bed with a makeshift ice pack, I heard Mom on the phone. Mrs. Richardson, I am so sorry about the delay. My incompetent daughter... Yes, we'll refund your deposit. Please don't tell your friends. Amy poked her head in my room. Mom says you can't come to my dance recital looking like that. You'll embarrass me. I turned away, tears stinging my wound. That's when I noticed Mrs. Peterson in her window across the yard, watching our house intently, writing something in a notebook. That night, I started planning. I needed out. I began researching GED programs, secret bank accounts, anything to escape. I'd play the obedient daughter until then, but never again would I let that iron near my face. Your credit score dropped 200 points. Michael stares at his laptop screen. Someone's been taking out massive loans in your name. I feel the blood drain from my face. The credit check we ran reveals five loans totaling $150,000, all using my social security number. Only one person would have access to that information. My phone buzzes. Amy calling. Against my better judgment, I answer. Finally picking up, sis? Mom's business is doing great, by the way. Those loans really helped expand operations. What loans? Oh, come on, don't play dumb. I've seen the paperwork. Your signature looks pretty convincing. Mom's gotten really good at forging it. My hands start shaking. You knew? Listen, I need $20,000. Otherwise, I might accidentally mention this to someone important. Michael grabs my trembling hands. I can trace the money flow. Something's not adding up with your mom's business finances. Three days of digging reveals the horrible truth. The expanded laundry service is just a front. Look at these numbers, Michael points to his screen. The reported revenue doesn't match the utility bills. No laundry business uses so little water and electricity with claimed profits this high. Rachel visits during our investigation, bringing disturbing news. Two teenage girls came to the youth center today. They described working for a cleaning service that matches your mom's business. The things they said, Emma. She's still doing it? Abusing workers? It's worse. They mentioned suspicious cash deliveries hidden in laundry bags. My phone dings with a text from Mrs. Peterson. Emma, we need to talk. I have something you should see. At her house, she pulls out a thick binder. I've documented everything since the iron incident. Photos, videos, dates, testimonies from other neighbors, your mother's accidents with other young workers, the strange late-night deliveries. She plays a video from just last week. A teenage girl sobbing, holding her burned arm while mom screams about ruined designer clothes. That's Maria. She's 15, Mrs. Peterson says softly. Your mother hired her off the books. Michael examines more financial records. The money laundering scheme is clever. She's mixing dirty money with legitimate cleaning service revenue. But she got sloppy using your identity for loans. Emma, look at this, Rachel points to her phone. Three complaints filed against Mitchell's premium cleaning for labor violations, all mysteriously dropped. She probably paid them off, I whisper. Another text from Amy. Clock's ticking, sis. $20,000 or mom finds out you're snooping. Michael squeezes my shoulder. We have enough evidence. The identity theft, the money laundering, labor violations, documented abuse. We can help those girls, Rachel adds. My contacts at social services are ready. Mrs. Peterson hands me her binder. 
eight years of evidence. Use it. My phone buzzes again, mom calling. For the first time in years, I answer. Emma? Amy says you're asking questions about the business. I'm your mother. Everything I did was for your own good. That iron incident, you know it was an accident. I hang up, hands steady for the first time in years. No more hiding. I look at my support team. It's time everyone knows the truth about Mitchell's premium cleaning. Anonymous tip received. Investigation underway. The email confirmation glows on my screen. Rachel rushes in one morning waving her phone. Turn on the news. Local business Mitchell's premium cleaning services raided by federal agents. Owner Linda Mitchell arrested on suspicion of money laundering, tax evasion, and labor law violations. My phone explodes with notifications. First, Amy. What did you do? The feds took everything. Then dad. Emma, your mother. She's been stealing from my retirement account. Hundreds of thousands. I had no idea. They found everything. Michael confirms. The forged loans, the laundered money, the abuse documentation. Mrs. Peterson's evidence was crucial. The investigation reveals more than even I knew. Mom had been running illegal operations through her cleaning business for years. Those designer clothes weren't just being cleaned. They were moving dirty money. You ungrateful little... Amy barges into my apartment. I need money now. They're investigating me too. Because you helped her forge my signature, Amy. You chose this. We're family. You're supposed to protect us. Like you protected me when mom threw that iron? The court proceedings last months. Every victim comes forward. The underage workers, the burned teenagers, the financial fraud victims. My childhood scar becomes evidence in the abuse cases. Dad files for divorce after 30 years. I should have protected you, he says at the courthouse. I'm sorry I was a coward. Then comes mom's letter from jail. Emma, sweetie, I've had time to think. I was under so much pressure. That iron incident. I never meant to hurt you. Please visit me. We can fix this. I delete it without responding. My design business takes off. A major tech company contracts me for their rebranding. Your portfolio is impressive, they say not knowing each design represents another step away from my past. At the survivor's support group, I finally tell my full story. The scar isn't just from an iron. It's from years of abuse disguised as tough love. From a mother who saw me as property, not a daughter. From a system that looked away too long. Mrs. Peterson sits in the back, smiling proudly. The verdicts come in waves. Mom gets 15 years for financial crimes, with additional charges for labor violations. Amy takes a plea deal but still serves time for fraud. Dad moves across the country, starting over. My phone rings. Another unknown number. Emma, please. Mom sobs. I'm your mother. Everyone's abandoned me. The business is gone. My reputation ruined. I need you. Goodbye, Linda. I hang up, blocking the number. Rachel hugs me tight. You did it. You're free. Michael kisses my temple right on the scar. Ready for dinner? That new client wants to meet tomorrow? I look around my office. Design awards on the walls. Healthy bank account. Supportive friends who became family. The business was called Mitchell's Premium Cleaning, I tell my support group. But the only thing that needed cleaning was the truth. Sometimes justice comes from standing up, speaking out, and walking away. Some people don't deserve forgiveness, and that's okay. My mother threw an iron at my face, but she doesn't get to iron out the consequences. What would you do if you discovered that a family member who abused you was stealing your identity and running a criminal operation? Would you turn them in, knowing it could tear your entire family apart? Or would you stay silent to keep the peace?